Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Let's go ahead and get into another unboxing episode. I've got four interesting electric guitars for us to check out today. A couple of them that we've seen before, but I'm very happy that I was able to find another one of these. I'm just hoping and praying it's in the condition that it was advertised in. Because the first one of these I bought, unfortunately, wasn't. But that's okay. It didn't stop me from wanting to try again. So let's go ahead and see what this guitar is that I'm taking a second chance on. Well, it's a little bit bigger than a Les Paul case, so it's not what we normally unbox on the show. But inside here is another Scotty Moore ES-295. No! <laughs> Thankfully, that is just, you know, some debris in here and not another ding on the top. <laughs> Looks like things kind of came out of our case compartment right there. That's where that inspected by thing normally is. So, we reviewed and demoed the ES-295 Scotty Moore Signature Limited Edition guitar in this episode right here if you want to check it out more in depth. But the story behind that is I had purchased it and when the shop was packing it up, they didn't notice it. It got a big old ding on the front and that just kind of ruined that particular example for me. So these things are ridiculously rare, but I was able to find another owner for that other one. And I thought, okay, next one that shows up, I'm going to take another chance on that. And then this thing showed up, I think about what, two, maybe three months after I had sold that other one. And it was listed as mint or something close. I mean, this one has got a little bit of finish checking around the nut, but just the usual outline one. And I'd say the overall fit and finish of the guitar from the factory, a little bit sloppier on this one on first impressions, but I'm really happy to have been able to get one of these things back again. Now, the big question is, do I keep it? Because this model is just skyrocketing in value lately because there was only one Scotty Moore and unfortunately he's no longer with us. And this is his only signature model that he did with Gibson. So I'm probably going to put this one back into my personal collection unless there's an offer that makes it worth my time. That's kind of what I'm doing with the really rare ones anymore. Cause it's like, you know, I like these things. I want to keep them. However, at the same time, I'm not going to keep it away from somebody else if they've been looking for one either. But inside here, hopefully, is the COA and all those other goodies, because this listing didn't have them listed, but I asked him about it, and he said, oh yeah, those are there, let me add some photos. And yes, indeed, this one is number 33 of 81. And we got that photo of Scotty right there, and the actual COA booklet that's just gigantic. Yep, it's got Scotty's signature there with Elvis, and all the other good stuff here. Very nice. I guess another thing to think of, even if they do reissue this one day, it's not going to have his signature and it's not going to be a Gibson Memphis product because Gibson Memphis does not exist any longer anyways. I will say though that the giant COA booklet for these things is probably my least favorite part of this whole set because there's no way to store this in the case, not even on top because then your lid won't close. So it's very common for people to lose this. So I'll do my best not to lose that. But yeah, 295s, if you've never checked one out, even if it's not the signature one, they are fantastic guitars. Love them just as much, sometimes even more than a Les Paul. But before we continue on unboxing today, let's go ahead and hear a word from our sponsor. The sponsor for today's episode is Magic Spoon, the keto-friendly gluten, grain, and soy-free low-carb cereal. If you're like me and loved eating cereal as a child, but later grew disgusted with how bad some of your favorites can actually be for you, you might have found yourself curious about this product too when seeing advertisements for it online. So they sent us four flavors to check out today, but they have eight core models and usually a limited edition flavor available direct on their website in one-time purchases or subscription-based savings plans. With zero gram sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, only four net grams of carbs and 140 calories per serving. Let's give these flavors a try. Mm. After careful consideration, fruity was my favorite of these four flavors. Second place goes to frosted, that one had a great vanilla taste. But hey, if you don't really care about the whole sugar aspect, these things make great crispy treats too. If you're looking for something tasty and high protein, to give your kids lots of energy. If you'd like to try some yourself, you can visit their website using my special link in the description. And be sure to use promo code TROGLY at checkout to get $5 off any order. Which is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. That's enough snacking, let's get back to unpacking. All right, let's go ahead and get on to guitar number two. We've got a large box. I marked it C-U-R. I can't quite remember because I have to remove the shipping labels, right? So you guys don't see addresses of people who are sending me stuff. So we're just going to have to see what's in this one together. 
Which so far I can say it's very well packed. All right, well after demummifying it, it's some sort of a rectangular case. So did I buy a Stratocaster or what is in here? This actually looks more like a base case, but yet it's very slim. What is in here? Kind of fender in style. One, two, three. It's a Christmas present again. Oh, oh, I remember what's in here now. <laughs> That's right, I I'm a madman, guys. Before this video aired, I was doing a little bit of extra research trying to find that Jimmy Dean car, right? I'm sorry it's not Jimmy Dean, but yes, I do own a third America Rocks NASCAR. <laughs> oh man, so this thing was actually sold at that same store that sold me the one and sold my buddy the one who then sold it to me, but this was traded into that store by somebody else. And then it was just there. I was going through Google Images and it said in stock. I was like, in stock? Heck yes, I want a third one. So yeah, I, I now have three NASCAR car guitars. If anybody has the Jimmy Dean one, I'm, I'm looking to trade one of these to get that thing. But funnily enough, this is actually the one that the dealer was using as stock photos on his reverb ads. I particularly like this one because it has cracks going through the windshield. <laughs> You know, as we were talking about in this review and demo, how the sticker will crack because of the way the wood moves and the finish in general. But this one, yeah, broken windshield one. It, it's kind of funny. It's just part of this whole thing. Like, I would say this one has the second best color, but it's definitely the worst in condition. But yes, this one is number 13. And if you go back to that review and demo, it's also part of the warranty replacement one. So unfortunately, I don't have any of the original, original ones yet. But yeah, I've got three of these. Do I really need? three of them no but now I can not only have a two guitars duel have two highly skilled guitar players come over I can have three of them on stage <laughs> but okay now this explains why there's so much packing material on this one this shop doesn't normally ship so if they do, they make you pay UPS's outrageous charges to pack it up for you. So for a UPS pack job, I'm kind of surprised at how flimsy this box was, but at least they did use a lot of padding in there because it was like some 250 bucks to ship this thing with their packaging. And no, this one did not come with a factory case. That dealer just happened to have a case that it would fit. So that's nice. But now we can move on to guitar number three. Now this is a model that we've seen on the show a while ago, but it's one of those really rare colors. It just happened to show up on Reverb one night and I was like, yes, I need to get this in. Probably won't do another review of it because I've already done the model before and I've already done this rare color in a different configuration, but we at least needed to unbox it on the show to see it in person, right? Looks like another well-packed guitar, double boxed. But inside this one sleeps a Gibson Custom Art Historic case. So that puts us in the late 90s, early 2000s. But wow, this case is ridiculously light. It almost feels like there's nothing in there. But anyways, let's go ahead and find out which model this one is. It's blue. It's a flame top. But this time, instead of being P90s, it's the humbucker variation. I've got to say, this looks really good in this configuration as well. Like this particular color, I just love it on almost everything. It's one of the DC Pros that we learned about in both of these episodes. And I actually do still have my P90 one. Somebody was flirting around with the idea of buying it. So that's why when I saw this one, I was like, well, I kind of want to get a shot of these two together so you can see the different iterations. That is a match made in heaven right there. Look at these two beauties together. If anything, seeing them side by side, it actually shows me how faded my P90 one is. You see how that's more like an aqua blue because it has a little bit of yellow over top of it, kind of making it almost a green color. Whereas this one, it hasn't aged quite as much or not been in the sun as much because that's a very vibrant indigo blue yet. You can really see that color difference on the logos. See how that one has that slightly yellow tint to it, whereas this one's just a little bit more pure white. That's the difference. Ooh, this is nice. A lot of these. Does that have gold frets? Holy cow. I'm not sure if that's just something that somebody cleaned them with something special that made them look like that, but usually a lot of these will have the whole fretboard shrinkage problem where they weren't stored properly and you get some very nasty feeling fret ends. 
Like, it looks like this one might have had a little bit of that, but then somebody went through and made them feel great. But this blue top has a lot of flame figuring to it. It's nice. But yeah, it's one of those ones that has the snakehead head stock, as some people call it. It's just more like a PRS style within Gibson's territory. And it looks like this one arrived safely, and yeah, I would say I'm very happy with this. Man, it even still has the uh, plastic over top of the back plate. That's pretty rare. Looks like we do have some scuffs on that, but they don't feel like they're in the finish very deep, so those might be able to be cleaned off. But there are a couple of dings on the back, so it's not mint condition, but you know, for one of these from 1998, it appears to be pretty clean. And oh my goodness. Ah, oh man, I thought we were going to have a COA. I didn't remember these things even coming with those. It's a bit early yet, but this is an early promotional material about this guitar. So it appears I might be missing a spec about these. Apparently they're compound radiuses, so that usually means 10 to 14 inches. I don't think I've ever talked about that. It looks like these come stock with 496R 500T, according to this. Or the P90 soap bars, as we talked about in that other episode. Doesn't look like they gave the headstock any particular name, just straight pull headstock profile. And the official finishes are Faded Cherry, Translucent Black, Butterscotch, and Translucent Indigo. So there you go. That's the official color of this one. Translucent Indigo. But ooh. It says 24 and 3 quarter inch scale or 25 and a half inch. Okay, now I'm going to have to be looking out for that 25 and a half because we have not ran into that before. We do have the 24 frets though. But that's a very cool piece of case candy. Do we have anything else in here? Yes, we do. Truss rod tool that has the original Gibson branding on it, so that's original. And the red warranty information that thankfully was filled out. 325 1998 This was a good find. But it's time that we move on to our final unboxing. Which in this case happens to be another one of my absolutely favorite 335s that were released within the past couple of years. Which is known as the Jim James ES-335. So let's go ahead and get the Owl 335 back open again. See if there's anything special about this one. Because that's what I like most about getting multiples of the new guitars. I mean, A, these things are worth more than they were brand new. 3500 bucks was just a steal. So if you ever find one of these, j just buy it. Just buy it. That's been my philosophy on these. Because it seems whenever I get one, somebody wants to buy it from me. So I at least want to hold one back for myself, right? But what kind of figuring do we have on this one? just looks like a pretty basic one so far. So this is one I had picked up from the Music Zoo when they had listed it. They've been listing a lot of cool guitars lately. I know we did those one pickup reviews a while ago, but they just got a new batch of guitars and maybe we'll have to do a episode on them. I'm not 100% sure. But as far as anything special on this one, Nah, it's just kind of a, a basic one. The owl has those white dots kind of around it. I've only found one that was really clean on that decal. This one dates to 2021. And as far as QC goes, looks like you're pretty all right for tooling marks on your fretboard. That's not too bad. You have a couple of them up here. So I'll probably put this one up on my website, troglesguitarshow.com, if you're interested in being the next owner of this one. But it's got all the case candy and everything too. So I think we should try one more time, see if we find another one that has better wood grain. Because they just happen to have two of them in stock. And if you're asking yourself, hey, why don't you just look at the photos? A lot of time it's just a stock photo and this finish is so dark you can't see the wood grain in person. So you got to take a chance. Now this one has a little bit more of like the, the wavy wood grain so far. But ooh, what is that? It's like tape. I was scared. It was like the finish flaking off. Apparently that happened on some of the very early Murphy Lab aged guitars. So this one looking pretty nice but unfortunately no flame figuring i really regret selling that one now because <laughs> i had one a couple of unboxing episodes that had a little bit of flame within the neck and i think even some within the body i might still have that body one but the one that had it on the neck i had just let that go a couple of uh, weeks ago now i'm kind of regretting it though <laughs> so yeah i've got two of these if you're interested they'll be on my website but that's all the guitar fun that I have planned for today, troglodytes. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.